Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Okay, so a couple months back I made an a unboxing video of a Dremel 3000. And I just kind of went over what was inside the box and stuff like that. And I put it on my YouTube. To be honest, what I made that video for, there's a site online. It's called Dremel Maker Studio. And they were looking for, it was a competition for uh, tool unboxing. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to buy a Dremel since I use them all the time. They're my favorite tool. And I'm going to do unboxing of it. Well, <clears throat> the winner won uh, first place. The first place winner won a $250 Home Depot card. Well, guess who won the competition? Jordy at Carving Fusion. <laughs> um, I don't think there was too many people that applied, but you know, it's it's a real great site that uh, Dremel Studio Maker for um, carvers and stuff like that. You can display your um, art on the thing, and you can also uh, they have lots of challenges that they give you, and you can earn points. and I don't know what happens with the points or nothing like that, but I I quite enjoy the uh, site. It's called Drum, Dremel Maker Studio. I'll try and put a link in the description below. So what I'm going to do? So I bought this. Um, I haven't received my gift card from, for Home Depot yet, but I went and spoiled myself and bought this Dremel uh, Stylo. I think I bought it on Amazon. Don't hold me to it. I'm in Canada, but I think it was like $59 or $69. Now, why I wanted to buy this is because when I'm using my normal Dremels, okay, when I'm using my normal direct Dremel flex shafts, okay, and I put the sounder in here. I got to keep changing the collet and it's a pain in the butt to change it everything all over from your carving burrs to this and then your little uh, bristles sanders, okay? So, but when I was putting these Dremel sanders in, I was turning my Dremel down and I, like I got suggested by my buddy Pete, the mad scientist, not to turn the Dremel down, leave it full blast because I use foot control pedals, okay guys? I control my Dremels with a foot control, look, on off. Slow, faster, 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 full blast, okay? But it's good to have your Dremel full blast and you can use your foot pedal. That way the, the control, the speed control in the Dremel, because I use the Dremel speed controls, the speed control in the Dremel and the speed control in the foot pedal don't interfere with each other. And the Dremel won't blow up or wreck. You know what I mean? So I've had good luck with that. So I don't like turning my Dremel down. You know what I mean? But I've been turning it down to use my sanding disc. Because I don't want to keep my foot like barely a quarter on the pedal. It's hard to keep the same speed when you're using the foot pedal, right? So it's just nice to turn the Dremel down, max the foot pedal out, and you got the same low speed. Because I use very low speed when I use these guys. Okay? You can see how I make these in my description in my playlists. I got videos about Dremels and all that stuff. So I'm not going to, I'm this, everything is in my opinion, guys. Okay. Everything is in my opinion. So, but I am deaf. This is not a heavy power carver. You can see here on the box, they're doing light etching on wood with a little tiny bit. Okay. So I am definitely not doing heavy carving with this stylo okay and i'm not doing this video for a promotional thing for dremel or anything like that you know what i mean so i'm just doing it to show you guys i haven't even opened the box yet so let me open it dremel always seals their stuff so good okay you know this tool is definitely i gotta make sure i use it at low speed because like i say again guys i have heavy hands you know what I mean? This is a real, I think this is a real, not delicate, but this tool is made for gentle use, okay? The box can go bye-bye. Here's your warranty and stuff like that. I'm not going to go through all that. Here's your different bits and stuff like that they give you in here. They give you some wood carvers, I see, some buffing wheels. They give you a couple different size collets. But what I'm going to use this, what I'm going to use on this, here it is. Look how it fits in my hand. Actually, it's, it's smaller than I thought, and it's pretty comfortable, actually, for my sander. So what I'm going to do, uh, yeah, you got a speed control hit right here. What does it go up to? It goes up to five. 
Okay, so yeah, it's, it's comfortable. This is something good for like glass etching or, or you put your little tiny burrs in there to do fine detail. You know what I mean? I'm not the best at doing fine detail because I don't have patience, but little burrs like this, you know, even smaller, like the burrs that they use for dentistry and stuff like that. So, but I, on my flex shafts that I use, you get these collets and you don't need a tool for them and they just twist on and you can change your bit, you know, you can find them on the Dribble Sater on Amazon or something like that, but they're the collets. But I'm going to use this collet on this piece because it's not the flex shaft and it'll be sold on there. I don't use these on the flex shaft pieces because it's more weight and it's more stress on your bearings and stuff in here and it's more stress on the flex shaft itself because I run these full speed. This is going to be slow speed for sanding so I can use it uh, because uh, I can yeah okay so let's take this let's see what size call it we got in here okay I think we already got a 1 8 call it yeah we already got the 1 8 call it there fits perfect but again I'm talking over myself we don't need the call it we're taking this call it right out because we're using this bit you know, it's like a chuck. You just turn it. So let's screw this on. I seen this. I seen a YouTube video. Somebody using this, or it was actually on the Dremel site, I think. Let's see if I can get this on. Is that the locking pin? That's power. So oh, you got a power button on it too. This little blue button's for power. Here's the locking pin right here. See it? So I'm gonna lock it up and I'm gonna spin this on. Okay, let's put our sanding disc in here. Okay, open her up. Put the sanding disc in. Okay, now let's uh, unravel all this stuff. And it's got a pretty long uh, cord on it too. So this is direct power, guys. Yeah, it's got a majorly long cord with it, and it's got uh, plugs into this thing that plugs in the wall. I'm sure it comes different for you guys in the UK. This is the America's, this is like American Canadian plug-in or whatever, but I'm sure it's different for all around the world. Okay, so I'm going to plug it in. Okay, she plugged in. So I'm going to start it on low speed, okay? Let's put power on. Nice and quiet. Okay, let's power up. Oh, this thing's actually got quite a bit of power. Okay, so watch. This is a real nice tool and I'm pretty actually pumped. So what I got here to practice sanding is to see how it works is this piece of U wood that I haven't finished. I made a video and I carved it out with my uh, bits and I haven't um, finished the god damn light. I haven't finished the beard here. So let's turn this to a speed where I think is going to be good. So let's try sanding. Hold on, guys. Oops. Power. So I'm going to lock it up again. And I'm just going to give this extra little bit of tight with the wrench. Okay. Let's turn her on again. Don't forget guys, this is really hard wood. I don't know how well it's going to work. I don't know how well it's going to work for this, um, for this 
Here guys, this might be a little bit too big for it. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take that off. Okay. And I'm going to lock on this bristle brush. Okay. Let's try This thing's like super light in the hands. Great for detail carving. Okay, let's turn her up. That's a little bit too fast for these bristle brushes. Actually, you know what? This bristle brush is dead. I'm going to stop the film here. There's nothing left here. They're gone. I'm going to stop the film. I'm going to re reload this and we'll start over again. Okay, guys, I changed my mind. I got this little tiny bit here that Dremel threw in the package, okay? So this is what they're suggesting to use small bits like this. But... They didn't even throw this bigger bit in, the Dremel carving bit. So they suggest you could use this too for fine detail. So let's see here. Let's see if I'm going to try and just put a couple little, this is real hard wood guys. So I'm going to put a couple little whisker lines just in here just to see uh, if she go. I'm telling you, those things are real comfortable in the hand. Okay, power. Power button right there. Sorry guys, I needed to put my uh, Dremel piece in closer like I uh, lecture on the videos. Not lecture, but try and tell you guys to put your Dremel pieces in farther that way so they're not sticking out because they can start spinning and like watch how smoother this is. It does bog out pretty easy. Let's try it on high. I shouldn't be using this too much on hardwood anyways, but let's do a couple more whiskers. Okay, now I'll stop the video and make a new flap sander and we'll, we'll sand this. Okay, see all the fluffies there? Okay, so here it is loose, right? Little flapper disc. Buy these on Amazon, guys. I always forget the names of them. Okay, and just hat, lock your pin, right? Lock it and tighten her up with this collet. Don't need the, you don't need the little wrench. So now let's see how well this uh, works for the sander. And I'm gonna turn this down for this. And here's your speed control right here. So let's turn it down, fire up. That's a good speed. It does bog out a little bit at this speed. Let me turn it up. There you go. Let's try this right here. This, see that fuzzy? A little bit too big, but if I can knock it down a bit. Sorry, guys, I shouldn't be doing this demonstration on such hard wood. This is U wood, very tough wood for the new carvers. 
So yeah, it works on the whip through here, cleans it up. That's a little bit too rough for these little flapper discs. So yeah, what's my opinion on the Dremel stylo for carving? Well, hold on. I think it's going to be perfect for sanding. It fits, it fits beautiful in the hand. Like watch, here's a finger, spot for your finger right here. See that? It fits beautiful, nice and comfort. Okay, so watch this compared to the flex shaft. So here's the size of the stylo. Yeah, stylo it's called. And here's the size of the flex shaft. Flex shaft is a little bit smaller. Not much. Not much. So, like I said, guys, I'm not going to be doing any heavy carving with this. It's not made for that. But can I do little tiny details with this? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, it's great for detail, and it's great for small sandings, as you guys can see what I did in the beard hairs. And another thing I wanted to, to point out, too, that Pete mentioned to me about my last video when my Dremel died and I changed the brushes, we do think it was the brushes that went, and I just didn't put them, I didn't clean the inner shaft out because the spring was in the second side of it, okay? But when you change your Dremel flex shafts, guys, this is a, what, this is a 3000. When you change your, your brushes, you, you shouldn't change them when it stops. You should do maintenance on your tools, guys. Blow this out. Maybe not use a compressor because if you use a compressor, you're going to blow the air more, the, the dust more into the engine. Just give it a hand blow, like blow it out with your mouth quickly, you know, and do maintenance like every fifth carving or fourth carving, pull it out, pull this out. Okay, demo time, gotta do it. Now where's my wrenches? Okay, you got a little wrench, you got that thing there. Just turn it off. Pete knows his tools, you know. I wanna say thanks again, Pete. Um, everything you've taught me is, is going a long way and I wouldn't be where I am now without all your help, buddy. Um, you guys, Pete, Pete's an awesome, super awesome person. I'm trying to talk to him about uh, creating his own YouTube channel. He's humming and hawing about it, but I can't pressure him to do it. If he wants to do it, he does. He's a wood turner and he makes lots of beauty. He used to make those beautiful wooden ducks and stuff like that. And his wife's a beautiful lady too, so hi, Mrs. Blair. And she makes the best cookies. So here is your brush. Okay, so I can see my brush is good. So instead of burning, burning all the way through these and your Dremel stops working, just check them once in a while. Now you have to get it back in there. It's square, so there's a square drive that you have to put it into. Can you guys see it? So, but whatever, I'll do that after. But check your brushes when your Dremel still works every, you know, 200 hours, 50 hours. I don't know, look it up on Dremel what they suggest. But do I like this? Absolutely. This is going to be a go-to go to a sanding tool for me. Yep, sure is. So there is my review on the Dremel Stylo. It's not even a review, it's just an unboxing. So some people can't afford the big Dremel, the flex shafts and stuff like that. Some people don't carve big, bigger things like I do with my smaller burrs. You know what I mean? So I think this is, I think this is a great tool for a lady. You know, some people struggle with arthritis in their hands and stuff like that and can't grip onto things. But this is a perfect fit. Look at my finger fit here. It's perfect. It's comfortable. This is rubber. So it's not going to slip and slide. You know, this is plot. Yeah, this is rubber too. But anyways, guys, I like it. And I'll be using it in some of my upcoming videos. Hope everybody's good. Take it easy. Oh, one more other thing I forgot to show in my video. This is uh, epoxy cast resin uh, Pete made. He was going to wood turn or something, but he just doesn't know what he wants to do with it, or he's not happy with it. But I want to see if you can see the, uh, the colors in there. It's got red, red stripes in there. It might be hard for you to see. Let's see if I can, uh, let's see here. Uh, it's going to be hard to see. 
the color. But you can kind of see the clear, thin streaks. But anyways, Pete gave to me this to me to see if I want to um, carve something out of it. So maybe I can get some suggestion from you guys. Look, uh, that's how big it is. I don't know. What should I try carving out of this? It's kind of weird shape for wood spirit. Maybe I could do one with like a like a air plant holder thing. So I don't know. Well, I'd like to hear you guys' opinions. What I can carve out of it. I gotta show you guys the color inside here. I just gotta show. You. Phone's coming off the. You're not going to see it. I'm half mental, so. There, you can see there. So I will be carving this. You can see there throughout there. So yeah, I will be carving this, but I'd like to hear some ideas what I can carve out of this sucker. Okay, guys. Hope to uh, hope everybody's doing good, and I'd love to see in the comments what I should make out of this sucker. Should I make a? Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of stuck. It happens. It happens to the best of us. I'm not saying I'm the best, but we all go through our um, our art uh, blockages. So maybe that's what Pete was having when he, uh, he had this sitting around. He tried to give it to me a couple times. I'm like, I thought he would have made something out of it by now, but I'll carve it. I know I can. I've already carved down the top there. My aluminum uh, cutting bits. Okay, I gotta stop talking. Shut up, Jordy.